We have a story about art to tell you next. It begins in San Francisco and it ends in Japan. It is not a story about Japanese investors buying up American art, although there's plenty of that going on. This is about a more subtle and respectful meeting of East and West. I just did it because because I knew how to do it. I didn't have, you know, that I, I, I heard it somewhere, this saying, first you do it, then you do it for fun, then you do it seriously, and then you're done. <laughs> Catherine Brown began printing etchings and selling them in San Francisco 25 years ago. Her Crown Point Press is credited with reviving the art of etching in America. No one, as far as I know, was doing etching professionally in this country at that time. People mm. thought it was a lot of little scratchy lines, which it sort of was. <laughs> Catherine Brown thought contemporary artists might be interested in using the traditional process to create unusual and beautiful art. In the early 1970s, Chuck Close, the artist known for his monumental portraits, working at Crown Point Press, created this self-portrait. And he did another etching entitled Keith. Chuck Close was one of the first artists Catherine Brown invited to go with her to Japan to make woodblock prints using the traditional Japanese process. It took five years for Chuck Close to agree to make the trip to Kyoto. It took me this long to figure out um, what I wanted to do and to understand enough about the conventions of of uh, Japanese uh, print making in order to be able to ask the right questions of the, of the printer. The printer is Tadashi Toda. He's a fifth generation master craftsman. He had been printing fans and matchboxes. Catherine Brown met him and urged him to switch to fine art. There's so few liberties taken in, in Chuck's work. I think if he'd been the first artist that Tota had, had to work with, he would have, um, Tota probably would never have done another one. <laughs> he has, he, he prints that whole thing at once, and then second block. He, second? Uh -huh. okay. Well, second time he prints the same time, block? Yeah, same block, okay. and he had this. Uh, Since Tota speaks only Japanese, the project needed an interpreter. But he had to be a special sort of interpreter, one who himself is a printer. Catherine Brown had that person in Takada, who was working for her as an etching printer. Uh, first time that the Toda saw me, he thought that I was very strange. <laughs> because uh, uh, I was speaking perfectly Japanese, but maybe I was thinking American way. And I was constantly asking the questions which was uh, demanding that yes or no, instead of, well, let me think. You know, that's the Japanese answer. Always you get, well, let me think. And can be no, yes, and you have to guess. Guess yes or no. That blue that's in there isn't in there. I like that. No, we don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore? <laughs> it's too bad. <laughs> When I say uh, color is too flat, too opaque, too dense, too yellowish, he's got to understand what I mean in my terms. Then he has to uh, explain it in terms that are understandable to Toto. <laughs> Six months before he arrived in Kyoto, Chuck Close sent a watercolor to Tadashi Toda. Toda decided how to render the design in wood blocks, which were then carved by a wood carver. Japanese wood blocks are really watercolors. Uh, uh, the wa watercolor pigment is is brushed onto the uh, onto the block, and almost all of it is removed, and then it's 
it just, the paper just kisses it and they rub the uh, paper uh, very slightly and, it, uh, and just some of this thin watercolor trans transfers to the paper and you slowly um, build a complex image by overlapping these um, transparent planes of color. Close's image required 51 wood blocks the, uh, and 119 the images, impressions. Uh, is made. This is, happens to be based on, on a photograph of my, my wife. And uh, I have uh, gridded the uh, photograph. And then I make, uh, I look at each piece, each uh, square in the grid, and I try and make assumptions about all the things that occur within that, within that, uh, within that square and find ways to make marks and color combinations which on some level stand for that, but not in a direct symbolic way. There are no marks that are hair or no marks that are skin. There's nothing about the... It is the most complicated paint. print Toto's ever done for Crown Point Press, but Takata remembers other challenges. Alice Cat, oh, uh, that was a... Uh, uh, very interesting experience <laughs> because the print itself looks very simple, but it was uh, one of the difficult prints for Toda to make. Uh, flat color is a, is the most difficult print, and also that particular blue is a difficult pigment to print. Helen Frankenthaler, she wanted to uh, mix the color, and so she did mix the uh, color uh, for Toda, but she wanted to keep it, and then, which was impossible because it's a water-based color and it evaporates. Bob Kushner, for instance, he was very fascinated with the, with the, uh, the process, and he got involved uh, making a second, uh, second image, and he wanted to make a third and fourth, fifth, and then Catherine had to uh, say no to him. Judy Pfaff, we send that uh, uh, drawing, quotes, you know, three-dimensional, uh, to Toda, and Toda <laughs> almost fainted to see that and because he has to translate that into two-dimensional watercolor base. And that drawing was done with a plywood, uh, pasted it up, and with the oil-based ink. Toto's become so much more confident as the time has gone on. He said at first this was his maximum size, absolutely. And that's what size we were working. but. Uh, then somebody made one a little bit bigger, and he said, okay, he'd try it, and, uh, and now, uh, now we're up to about 30 by 40 is the biggest we've done. Pat Steer was the first artist to make a woodblock print with Toda. Recently, she returned to make another larger one. Francesco Clemente made two prints on his first visit. Two years later, he made another. The second one is absolutely splendid. It's just the most amazing print. He understood the, what, what, what was going on, and the printer understood him. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get everybody to go back. Richard Diebenkorn plans to go back. He has done two prints already. If the image is one that's very popular, like the blue Diebenkorn is a quintessential Diebenkorn image, and, and people like it very much. And so in what's called the aftermarket, it, it, the price has gone very high. It went for auction uh, very recently for $15,000. The woodblock prints, in additions of 100 to 200, originally sell for a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. Kathan Brown markets them to collectors. And we've tried very hard to keep them inexpensive. But the manipulation of the yen hasn't helped. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is expensive to do business in Japan right now. Japan is what gives Crown Point's woodblock prints their special quality. <laughs> There's something uh, wonderful about eating all, all these wonderful foods. It's a wonderful mix of, of, um, of experiences that makes it a very different project from anything else I've done. Bye, bye, bye.
Carlos. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? Well, You're not no very quite. ready. You still got your hat on. The tofu is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful. It's really a nice breakfast. It's really not about manufacturing. Art in general isn't. And prints, if they're really good prints, aren't about that. It's it's really about the artist learning something and using it and then having it come out in this work. So that's why we need to go to Japan. That's why we need to stay in a, a really traditional place and do as much absorbing of the materials, the cultures, the temples, and so on that, that as we can. It's about experience. That's really what art is about. 